time. What do these things have in common? A piece of pie, a piece of the puzzle, peace fingers, and a peace sign. Did you get it? They all have the word peace. But there's two different kinds of peace here. There's the word peace like a piece of the puzzle or a piece of pie. Hint, the word peace like a piece of something always includes the word pie because we always want a piece of pie, right? But then there's the word that sounds the same but is spelled differently and means something else completely. And this kind of peace is the opposite of worry or fighting or even stress. The world sees this kind of peace as a calm or a restfulness or the absence of war. When there is no war, there is peace. Or they might see it as relaxing. All people long for peace in one way or another. Some people just want peace after the end of a stressful day. And some people want peace for the entire world where there's no more fighting, no disagreement, and no war. But the peace the world offers only lasts for a short little while. Until Jesus comes back, there will always be war on earth. And even meditation, where we look inside of ourselves and try to find calm, that can't work, because guess what? There is no true calm inside myself. And a vacation is never going to bring lasting peace. It'll bring relaxation for a little while, and you'll have some fun and some great memories. Vacations are good but they will not give the kind of peace that we all desperately need. But as followers of Jesus, we have true lasting peace available to us through the Holy Spirit. And this month we are learning about the fruits of the Spirit, which are the characteristics that God's Spirit grows inside of us when we do life with Jesus. So let's look at Galatians 5 and read about those fruits of the Spirit again. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Peace is a fruit of the Spirit that we receive because it grows inside of us as we abide with Jesus. Remember that word abide means to do life with or to live with. So as we live with Jesus, his Holy Spirit comes inside of us and grows fruit, just like an apple tree grows apples. So where do we need to go to understand more about peace? We need to go to the Bible. So let's dig in and find out what we can learn about peace from God's word. We're gonna start in Philippians chapter four. Don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Philippians tells us that we can experience God's peace when we pray to God. And Philippians says that it's God's peace. So we know that it comes directly from God. Well, Romans 5 says this. Since we've been made right in God's sight by faith, we have peace with God because of what Jesus Christ our Lord has done for us. So the main reason that we can have peace is because Jesus has come and paid the price for our sin. And that has allowed us to have a right relationship with God or a right friendship with him. And that is peace. There is peace between me and God because of what Jesus has done for us. We know that true peace comes from God, that it's the fruit of a Holy Spirit, and that it's the opposite of worry. And just like we now know that we have peace with God, we can have peace with others as well. That peace that the Holy Spirit grows inside of you isn't just a calmness inside. It is that, but it is also peace between you and others. It allows you to get along with others as much as possible. Peace is such an amazing work of the Holy Spirit in our lives because our days can be filled with stress and worry and chaos, and God is the opposite of all those things. So as we learn to walk with Jesus through life and quiet our souls before him, we are filled with the peace that only he can give, the peace that passes our understanding. It's bigger than anything we can understand. And that peace allows us to move forward, even in challenging times. It doesn't make life easier, but it does mean that we don't have to worry about tomorrow or worry about what we're going through right this moment because we trust the one who is in control. The peace that the world offers will only give you a little peace for a little bit of time. It's very temporary. And you have to work really hard just to experience that little bit of peace. But the peace that comes from God isn't something you work for. You draw near to Jesus and he gives you peace. So when you're going through worry or stress or fear or just a chaotic time, I want you to remember what Jesus said when he gave his disciples peace. He said this, 
I'm leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world can... I am leaving you with a gift, peace of mind and heart. And the peace I give is a gift the world cannot give. So don't be troubled or afraid. Trust these words. and Be still. And remember who your God is. You can trust that God will be with you and that his Holy Spirit will produce peace inside of you as you walk with him. Let me pray for you. God, thank you for the peace that you give through your Holy Spirit. Thank you that no matter what we're facing right now, we can experience true peace and know that you love us deeply. We can trust you because you always keep your promises. Would you grow the spiritual fruit of peace in our lives? Help us to lean on you and not the world's understanding of peace. Help us to look to you and not within ourselves. In your name, amen. Okay, guys, it's time to pause and pray. I want you to pause this video and think about these things and talk to Jesus about them. Grab a piece of paper and draw a line down the middle. On one side, draw a picture of chaos the opposite of peace. Maybe it's a situation in your own life right now, or maybe it's something you're afraid of, or maybe it's someone in your life that you need to pursue peace with. On the other side, draw what the situation would look like with peace that comes when we trust God. Then take a moment to pray for that situation and ask the Holy Spirit to grow peace in you and bring peace in your situation. Let's memorize God's word together. In John 14, verse 27, Jesus said this, The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. Can you say that with me? The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. John 14, 27. Okay, let's hide some words and see if we can remember them. The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. John 14, 27. Let's hide some more words. The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. John 14, 27. Ready for more? The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. John 14, 27. It's getting tougher. The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. John 14, 27. Let's make it way harder. The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. John 14, 27. I think we've got it. How about you? The peace I give is a gift the world cannot give, so don't be troubled or afraid. John 14, 27. Can you say it without me? Give it a try.
Thanks for joining us this week, friends. Don't forget, we have fun stuff happening online throughout the week on our Facebook page. Ask your grown-up to check in.